you're sort of unusual in that you've won both uh, the ACM Turing Award and um, the Nevin Lena Prize, if I'm correct. Right. So if you wouldn't mind, just to start off, let me know uh, if you could tell us what you're best known for for both of those awards. Um, well, the awards uh, overlap. So I'm a theoretical computer scientist, uh, so some of the work is regarded both as mathematics and, and as computer science, so some of it is viewed more for the mathematical content and some of it more for I impact on, on computing, um, but some work is recognizable for, on, on both sides uh, in principle. So, uh, um, and in, in what area was it, for example, for the Turing Award, what, what was the statement that, that you were awarded it for? Yeah, well, actually, for, for both, there's a, a, there's a, okay, for the Turing Award, they do have an explicit statement. So I think it was a, a list. So it was um, uh, machine learning, uh, complexity of algorithms, distributed, distributed computing, parallel, parallel computing. So. And for the Nevin Lena Prize, there wasn't a specific? Uh... Uh, at the time, there wasn't uh, an explicit statement, but um, um, I think there the work on complexity of algorithms was probably what was what they liked. Yeah. Now, most of what we'll talk about will be about um, will be about mentorship and how you developed and how you helped to develop others, since that's a lot of what the HLF is about. Um, excuse me. Um, tell me what sort of uh, who are your mentors? Um, yes, I'm not quite sure whether uh, the word mentor is uh, what I'm most comfortable with discussing because in science I think one really has to uh, discover oneself. Um, but, but certainly um, my PhD experience with my advisor was uh, for me a fantastic experience. I had a great PhD advisor, Mike Patterson. Um, he was a great scientist, he was, he, he was a great communicator, was very generous with his time. So I certainly benefited from having an amazing time as a, as a PhD student. And where was that? So at Warwick in England. Mm -hmm. um, but I mean, but being a PhD advisor is a kind of a particular task, which is reasonably well de uh, defined. Um, so in science, uh, I think m more generally, you know, people have to, to discover their own. Uh, they have to discover uh, a new person. They can't imitate someone else. Um, so I think they have to go around and uh, maybe sometimes ask for advice, talk to people, see what ideas they can get. Um, but this idea that there's one person who can guide them and give them constantly good advice, it's, it's not something which uh, I've seen much of, although it's, everyone discusses it. Um, was there a moment that you realized what your path would be? Um, in, in path in science? Well, you say that, yeah. that you have to find your own, your own path, your own uh, area of interest, I suppose. Um, yes, yeah, so I think when I was a, uh, even in my teens and undergraduate, I, I was studying mathematics and also some physics, and I was uh, certainly very interested in the depth of all the contributions in mathematics, mathematics and physics. Um, but then for some reason I, in fact, decided to go a different way to computer science, which was uh, not only new, but uh, you know, was very partial. So, you know, so we had no idea whether a substantial field would, would develop. It was, a, it was a risk. Okay, so certainly making the decision to going to computer science. I think, um, I'm not quite sure how exactly I did it, but that was clearly a crucial decision. Um, and it worked out well for, well for me. I think the field suited me. And around what year would that have been? Um, well, so I finished uh, studying mathematics as an undergraduate, uh, and then I took one year as a, doing a kind of generic computer science course in London. And it's in the course of that, I had to decide where to do a PhD. And uh, then I read a lot of things, especially about the, um, looking at various universities I could go to and looking at potential advisors, read their work, and, uh, and that's, how I, that's how I decided. I'm also trying to get a sense of what period in history, since so, that's, uh, so much of computer science depends on. Right, right. So, so this was 1970-71. Oh, okay. Okay, yeah. Very exciting time. Yes, yes. <laughs> but early days. Yes, yes. Um, um, and you said that your advisor was, was influential on you. I understand your yeah. reticence to say mentor, but uh, what made him so good for you, do you think? Um, so, uh, well, I think it was an extremely uh, 
good match in that I think I, I benefited a, a, a lot. Um, but basically I think he was an extremely good scientist who could also com communicate what he was doing um, and also um, you know, made the time to, to do it. So it was a small environment. Um, there were just one or two PhD students in the department I was in. It was a new department. Um, so the environment was very different from what a student now would meet in a, in a large department. Um, but I probably had a very rich experience uh, um, and not overloaded with uh, stimuli uh, as one would be in a, in a large department now. Well, now you say that that's different from students today. Uh, what other differences do you think there are between studying, let's say, mathematics? I mean, obviously, computer science has changed a great deal. But mathematics, how do you think that study has changed? Um, well, you should ask someone who is in a mathematics department. So I'm not quite sure whether that's um, how, how, how much that's changed. Um, I mean, computer science has changed a lot simply because little was known then, and there's much more known. It's, now it's very broad, um, and uh, there's a vast amount of, of activity. You know, you have to um, you have to be very dis discerning, I suppose. How do you choose what you do today if there's if there's so many things you could be doing? So it must be very confusing. Um, but even then, if you went to a conference, there were you know, lots of talks which you didn't understand, and you know uh, you had to you know put up in a, in operating in the field which all scientists do. Uh, uh, most of the things going on they don't really understand too well and yet they still have to find something to do which they understand and, and, and choose it. Now you say that people today have so much to choose in computer science. Um, how do you help them focus or what, what advice do you give them or, or how do you influence them I suppose? Yes, uh, that's um, difficult. Uh, you know, again, I, I think they, you have to uh, help them choose, choose for themselves. So you have to make sure that they expose themselves to, uh, to different options say early in their PhD careers so they can really make a choice and rule some things out and you know, keep a few, uh, a few options open. Um, because you know, research is a pretty, uh, you, have, you have to be pretty dedicated to do research and, and you won't come and try to solve the same problem day in and day out unless you, you really want to. So you better choose problems which have some fascination for you. And different things have fascination for different people. And one can't choose that for, for, for someone else. Um, but yeah, you, have to, you have to encourage people to find something which they're excited about. And do you have any ways of doing that? Do you have a, a style, I suppose, that, that helps them do that? Um, I don't think I have a style. I, I suppose when, peop when, peop when people uh, seem to be not interested in anything, then you try to suggest something different to them to look at. Uh, you don't want them to get stuck in something which, you know, where you don't think there's a future for them in, in, in that area because they're just not sufficiently interested. Um, so I don't think there's a style. Um, yeah, I think the problem is to, uh, is, to, um, is to understand when people have found something which they really want to do and, and when they haven't. Um, now, is this your first HLF? It's not, is no, it? No, it's not, it's not. No. How many have you been to? I suppose this may be my fourth one. Oh, really? Yes, yes. Quite a few. Have you noticed any difference over the years? Have, have, have it, has it changed? I, um, not in a big way, I don't think. Um, but you keep coming back, so... Yes, yes, like yes, it. yes. I do. I, I do like it, yes, yes. What do you get from it? Um, well, I think... Uh, uh, some of the talks are very good. I, I enjoy talks to more general audience. I get a lot out of that. And I also uh, enjoy meeting the students. You do find a, a different cross-section of students here than, than elsewhere. The, uh, um, so the selection of students here I think is a bit different from uh, like the universities, uh, universities I'm familiar with. I, I like the fact that they the interest, interesting cross-section from around the world and the students somehow seem very kind of enterprising intellectually that I presume even to apply uh, here you, you need some some enterprise <laughs> and um, you know, so I, I like the spirit which mm -hmm. the students show here. Have, have any of students uh, surprised you with, with uh, insights or fields of study or anything like that? Um, uh, yes, I mean there are one or two I've, from previous HLFs who I've kept in touch with. Um, um, 
we haven't quite collaborated on research, but uh, there's some communication going on. Um, so, um, yes, I, th I think some of the students are clearly extremely bright. They, they really, really want to do something serious. And uh, I think they put good choice in what they're interested in. Uh, so, yeah, so, so, so I think wh whoever's choosing the students here is doing a very, very good job. What do you hope that they get from you? Um, well, I, I uh, um, yeah, I, I wouldn't presume <laughs> presume to say to say that, but certainly if, um, from my experience, you know, if you talk to various people, sometimes there's, there's a conversation which uh, has, has an impact on one, and you can't predict which conversation it's going to be, and often it's not uh, lo you know, logically predictable at all. Um, so certainly, if they talk to people who do um, something which uh, they want to do, um, you know, there may be a meeting of minds, maybe momentarily. Is there anything that, that you think is coming up in the next few years that's especially exciting in your field? Um, well, you know, so, so, so the, the, you know, trying to pre pre predict uh, future uh, Developments or even what fields are going to be important. Uh, I, I don't like doing that. <laughs> I, I don't think it's it's uh, Possible because I mean I think what you hear in the corridors is usually some it's the market like a marketplace some balanced view of what people think um, uh, Is important now um, Yeah, so I wouldn't like to make predictions about particular results or particular fields um, But I think you know, I think uh, what you hear in the corridor is some consensus view, <laughs> and uh, that's what the best there is. <laughs> is there anything else that you'd like to add, uh, either about the, the, the forum or about mentorship? Or, excuse me, I've yeah. used that yes. in the proper yeah. word. Yeah. Yes. Um, no, no. I think it's a I think it's a wonderful institution, the a HLF. Um, you know, I think they they, they choose uh, the students. Uh, uh, excellent, uh, in my view, so that's what, that's what brings me back here. Um, and I think they also managed to have an interesting program, so the organizers seem maybe mutate the program a little bit to keep it, keep it interesting. And um, so, I like, uh, you know, so I like that too. So the organizers do think caref carefully about what to do each, uh, each time. I'm just going to take a quick look at the other questions that I have here and see, because you're, you're very concise in your answers. Oh, okay, so. sorry, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's good. Okay. Uh, well, short interviews are good as well. <laughs> yes, and I think, I think we've covered quite, yeah, quite yeah. a lot of ground here. So, if, if you were there at Michael Tia's talk this morning, were you? I was, yes. Okay, well, so some people have one volume collected work, some people have 73 volumes. So. <laughs> And neither is better <laughs> than the other. Well, thank you very much. Okay. A pleasure. Pleasure.